Hi, I'm Carrie from Feel Good Teaching, and today I want to talk about three common mistakes teachers are making during STEM challenges. So let's get right into it. The first mistake teachers are making is giving too much or too little direction. Let's start with too little. If you're asking students, can you build a bridge or can you build a tower, you're missing out on a lot of potential opportunities. Think about the kind of writing your students might produce if you simply ask, can you write an essay? or can you write a story? What we want to do is give students an idea of what the parameters for success entail. One simple thing you can add, of course, is just an overall goal, the highest tower or the longest bridge or the bridge that can hold the most weight. But we can build in layers from there, thinking about what types of content standards we might wanna start building in. For example, if we know after the fact we're going to be reading Three Billy Goats Gruff and we want there to be enough room for there to be trolls underneath the bridge, we can add a height requirement that that bridge needs to be above ground by a certain number of inches or centimeters. Or maybe you know you have a unit on earthquakes coming up, so you can add a criterion about the stability of that bridge so then you can relate it to those content lessons that are coming in the future. On the flip side, if you give too much direction, you run the risk of turning this into a craft rather than a challenge. Now crafts have their place, but they do not provide students with the types of problem solving and critical thinking skills a proper STEM challenge should. So you always want to avoid showing students examples of completed designs, using obvious or directive materials, or helping them too much when they get stuck on a design problem. Remember, you're not helping your students by helping your students during STEM challenges. The next mistake teachers are making is in how they assess STEM challenges. Now I do have another video on assessments during STEM challenges, but I need to cover a few points here because it is a very common mistake. First, I would recommend considering whether it's even necessary to assess your STEM challenges. For me, what I look for is the student groups have made an honest attempt to meet all the criteria and constraints set forth in the challenge, and I also require each individual student to complete a record and reflection handout. I personally don't believe in grading the actual design itself, but if you are going to do so, I would say never on the first iteration. To me, that feels a little bit like grading a quick write as though it's a final draft of writing. The reason I don't grade the designs themselves is that to me, the designs are actually incidental or secondary. To me, the emphasis should be far less on the end result and far more on the thinking, analysis, and reworking of designs. To sum it up, process over product. And another reason I don't like to grade the actual designs is because of the way that impacts how my high achievers approach STEM challenges. What I want to see is creativity and innovation. But what happens when my overachievers know the end result is going to be graded is they try to play the game. Instead of taking risks and doing something creative, they try to figure out what do I want to see and then produce that so they get the grade they're looking for. And I don't want them playing that game. I want to see what they create when they aren't worried about the grade they're going to receive. But the absolute worst mistake teachers are making with STEM challenges has everything to do with their mindset about failure. A teacher's fear of failure can impact a challenge in two ways. One, it can make her create a challenge that's actually too easy for her students and thus not challenging. And two, it can influence her to give up on a challenge too quickly. I always recommend that you set up a criteria and constraints list that you think is just pushing your students a step too far from what they can actually do. You'll be surprised a lot of the times you are wrong and they can do far more than you ever imagined. And it sure is nice when they succeed. Of course, I love when that happens and the students love when that happens, but there's so much to be gained when they fail and you don't have to shy away from that or be scared of it. We want to embrace the challenge. It's a challenge, not a craft. So in each STEM challenge, you should go into it knowing full well your students might fail. And you can do so without being nervous because you know if they do fail, you'll be able to follow up with some of the most powerful lessons on scientific reasoning and analysis. And you also know that when students meet with struggle, that helps them develop their persistence and resilience. Failure is not just okay, it can be great. It can provide for some of the most teachable moments you have all year. Sometimes I flippantly say that science is 99% failure. Now that's obviously a dubious stat. I don't have anything behind that. Think about that famous quote from Edison about the light bulb. I haven't failed, I found 10,000 ways that won't work. And this is where I mean that sometimes teachers' fear of failure makes them give up too soon. If a challenge doesn't go well the first time, sometimes teachers say, oh, well, that was too hard for my students. Oh, we can't do it. But I encourage you to think about lab scientists. Have they found all the cures for all the diseases we have yet? No. But did they say, oh, I guess it's too hard and it can't be done. People are just going to die now. I, for one, am so glad our scientists are still looking for cures for all the different kinds of cancers and other diseases. And that's what's so exciting about STEM challenges is we have the ability to help students build up that persistent, resilient spirit. But in order to do that, we have to give students opportunities for multiple iterations 
And we also have to approach these challenges not with the mindset of it should be successful on the first time, but that it's completely normal and probably expected that many times our first attempt will fail. Trust in your students' ability to problem solve and bounce back and give them the opportunities to do so. So when you're preparing for your next STEM challenge, ask yourself, am I giving too much or too little direction? Am I assessing in the right places if I'm assessing at all? And have I let my mindset about failure negatively impact my students' experience as they're working through the engineering process? Hope that helped you out. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you're following or subscribe so you don't miss anything. Have a fabulous week. I'll see you next time.